Nuclear devices come in all shapes and sizes, just like the lunatics who use them. Anyone who tells you that the threat of thermonuclear war is over is a fool, an enemy, or both. Hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Play. I am Titan, of course, and this is probably one of my most requested games. Um, as a lot of you long-time uh, subscribers will know, I've actually done all the other uh, Strike games, uh, and believe it or not, I have done this one as well. Um, however, for some reason, the game has vanished off my channel for reasons that I do not understand. I have been asked so many times, hey Sega fan, where's your playthrough of Nuclear Strike? Hey Titan, I think you should add this one to the list. And I was like, I have. Until I searched it up myself and yeah, for whatever reason the playlist has completely and utterly gone. Which is a little bit sucky because this game is actually bastard hard like proper proper hard um, on some of the uh, some of the later levels uh, in fact I think the second to last level and one level in particular that I will mention when we get to it is infuriatingly difficult and I remember when I finished my first let's play of this I'm like gee I'm glad I never have to do that again I mean I have played it once since then I think but like hey I never have to go through the frustration of recording it again but um, here we are. Anyway, I love this game. I love the Strike games. Just listen, listen to that music. It is fantastic. And that cutscene is amazing. And what a shame we never got another, another nuclear strike game, uh, another strike game after this. We did get LAPD, Future Cop LAP LAPD, which was supposed to be future strike but um, they ended up turning it into a, a, an entirely another game a different game which was actually not a bad game but it's not what we wanted anyway this is an FMV heavy game so we will be going through most of the FMVs unless I forget them so oh, listen to that music <laughs> Oh man, I'm I'm ten years old again. I rented this game extensively as a kid. I don't know if I actually ever completed this game as a kid. I may have. But yeah, I, I remember seeing this on the shelf of my local uh, video rental store. A stop and shop, it was called, actually. And I remember before I had a PlayStation, I used to just stare at the back of the box uh, after being such a fan of the first trilogy. And I just, I, I couldn't comprehend the graphics of the game and, and, and the fact that there was full motion video and la la la. Anyway, I could gush all day, but then we would be here all day. So, let's continue. Let's go to Strike Files. Let's see Earl, Hack, and Andrea. These are our support network should we say uh, apart from Earl Earl is our superior so let's go uh, get an introduction to the team money money is just worthless paper unless it's backed by something freedom freedom is just a pretty idea unless it's backed by force and that's what strikes about sing it brother Oh, is that all we get? I thought that was longer than that. And we have Hack. Hack's our intelligence guy. You know, people used to say, what you don't know can't hurt you. But, not anymore. What you don't know can get you killed. See, knowledge is power and StrikeNet is our generator. I mean, it connects us to everything, everywhere, anytime. Winning and losing starts in the brain. Mm -hmm. That's why they call it intelligence. <laughs> It's only intelligent when it's uh, accurate, Hack. Remember that, buddy. 
and Andrea. Perception of reality is as important as reality itself. You control perception, you control events. GBS controls perception. Strike controls reality. At least, At least that's, that's the way, the way it's, it's supposed, supposed to work. Mm-hmm. So that's the team. We've got our reporter slash field agent, our intelligence guy, and our commander. So let's get out of here. Now, we can actually configure our chopper here. We can have a balanced load and we can change our special weapons. Now, you know what they say, standard load isn't for every road, but I disagree. Standard load in this game is, is where it's at. This gives you your hydras, your hellfires, and your chain gun. But, if, I'm gonna have to remember the buttons now, there we go. Uh, we can go for all rockets if we want. I, I don't know why you would do this. I don't know if anyone has done this before. Oh, you can go for all missiles. And guns only. I mean, that's some serious MLG stuff right there. Uh, wingtip, we can have the special weapons. Which are the sidewinders, which are devastating. Don't know why they chose uh, sidewinders. Sidewinder is an air-to-air -air missile. It's, it's kind of strange. But, you know, whatever. It works. Sidewinders are extremely powerful. Fuel drop pods. I have played this game with fuel drop pods. Uh, I mean, they're not overly useful because you have to find special um, refill containers for them. You can't just refill them with your standard fuel. And ECM, which on paper, electronic countermeasures, sounds good. But I've never managed to actually... Um, see them work uh, or get them to work so we're just gonna go we're just gonna go with a standard standard load we we'll go for balanced weapons and sides control difficulty that's interesting ha huh. I don't remember an easy mode huh oh well, well we'll go with normal anyway um right press X to continue we are going to go push start for Delta. Delta strike. Hey, yo, big general. We got a hit on a reprocessing plant in Belarus. In the mm. inventory list, a missing plutonium pit from an SS missile. Uh oh. Mass and blast potential. Oh, about 10 pounds of fission material. That's enough to rock a city. What data links we got? Interpol tracked it to Bangkok. Then they lost it. Andrea. Nick Arnold was inserted into the jungles of Indocene on recon, but his signal's gone down. Suspects. My best guess is, it's Colonel Lamond. He sold out every intelligence agency that hired him. Uh-oh. Hmm. this. Local resistance is led by one, Naja Han, survivor of the Colonel's killing field, and one, Arn, so you know what I'm saying? Indocene takes full priority. Commander, contact Nick Arnold and support Naja and the resistance. Hey, Nick Arnold. We remember him from the first game. Indocene, a simmering jungle kingdom. Somewhere along the river delta. Damn. 0930. Hell, who's out of bed by then? Honestly. Right, here we are. Let's go. Let's check out our first mission, Smoke Pits. Now, as I said, very, very FMV heavy this game is. Uh, and I want to show them all off because some of them are pretty damn cool. At least I think so. So, smoke pits. Le Monde conceals his nefarious activities with smoke pits. They release electrostatic particles into the air, obscuring Strike Net's ability to detect any assets in the area and preventing Strike from locking onto Nick's signal. Use your weapons to snuff out three smoke pits. Alrighty. And we have a video Chief, as well. The Delta swarming with enemy patrol boats in the shores are lined with Doug and Triple A. Five, five, with five, Amanda. So badass. Okay, and we have the enemies. Scout vehicle is powered by six-wheel drive and can go just about anywhere. Greyhounds are often used as command cars or to provide a fast-moving spearhead for armored columns. That's called the Greyhound because it moves troops around fast. But two rockets will muzzle this puppy. Oh, I love those. They're so cool. Uh, and Vulcans as well. This vehicle is a modified M113 personnel car 
carrier. Blech. It is fast, nimble, and amphibious. The high rate of fire of the Vulcan's Gatling gun adds a curtain of anti-aircraft defense. Or deadly, gra uh, or deadly ground support. That's kind of weird. Yeah, okay. What you see ain't necessarily what you get. Usually these troop total tin cans are lightly armed, but beware, some might be packing Gatling guns. Pretty sure they're all packing Gatling guns, hack. And Duster. This 50s era American vehicle uses the same chassis as the M41 Bulldog. Ah, oh, Bulldogs. Yes, they were, they're brutal model tanks. The Duster was designed for anti-aircraft defense. It's twin 40mm cannons. Um, can cause sizable damage because of a rapid fire. A rapid rate of fire, I should say. They call them Dusters because they're major league sky sweepers. The good news is that their turrets turn as slow as a battleship. Nail them before you're pushing up bases. We certainly will hack. And then we've got the M41 Bulldog Heavy Tank. This Korean War era vehicle is the heaviest tank that the Delta Roads can handle. Designed to stand up to powerful Soviet T-34s, the Bulldog has thick armor, a 76mm cannon, and 50 caliber machine guns for added AA defense. Ooh. If this thing were heavier, it'd just sink into the bottom of the swamps and we could all go home. <sighs> Hit it with the Hellfire Hydra 1-2 punch, and it's history. You got it, Hack. Hellfire 1 2 punch. Yep. A classic of the strike games. One Hellfire, one Hydra. Good night. So, what have we got here? AMX 13 75 medium tank. This old French tank is still found in the third world. An autoloader provides rapid fire for its deadly 90mm main cannon. Um, many revisions, or oh, many versions, are also fitted with hot missile launchers for tank. For a tank killing punch. Oh. These things dish it out better than they could take it cheap. Whack them with the hellfire before they play their missile quartet. Otherwise, it could be your last dance. That's some fancy jinking. Right, what else we got here? Oh, and the M5A1 light tank. Named for the arduous cavalry commander. Uh, Jeb Stewart. These speedy but slow firing tanks were designed to charge into danger ahead of heavier tanks. Mm. They were making these things before most of us were born. They're better at running away than fighting. <laughs> well, alrighty then. 75 armor, so three health, uh, three hydras, and that thing is gone. And a pibber. Armor 50. The US Navy used these vessels to patrol coastal and river waterways during the Vietnam War. The PBR is really a modified fiberglass pleasure boat armed with a 50 caliber machine gun and an M60 grenade launcher. And I need to move this table out of the way. Yeah, which usually has my laptop on it, but it doesn't now because I'm not streaming. And adjust my microphone. Excellent. Pibbers are as common as rubber ducks around here. They're not bathtub tours. They can launch a grenade every four seconds. Every four seconds smokes. Well, we don't have to worry too much about these. Now, what have we got here? Local victims. Uh, rescue any local villagers or villagers who are under attack from Le Mans. You can drop them off at a landing zone. The Apache can hold up to six passengers. Locate better winch equipment to speed up loading. Yeah. Hey. Find a quick letter, you can rescue dudes twice as fast. Rescue Keep dudes. We'll be saving all the dudes. Maybe. Maybe we will. Armor, smart armor. Your super Apache is outfitted with classified system of self-restoring armor plates. Winch up armor crates for a full armor replenishment. You can also rearmor at a passenger landing zone. Each passenger unloaded repairs 200 points of damage. Any extra will be lost. If you crash on your last attempt, all onboard armor will be depleted and your super Apache will self destruct. Uh oh, we don't want that to happen. If you ain't dead by now, smart armor's the reason. Keep your eyes peeled for armor crates. Winch them up and they'll make your gunship as good as new. Mm hmm. We do like our smart armor. Conducting a campaign. Home base is a stealth naval vessel, the Sea Shadow. Use the two temporary landing zones for most uh, fuel and ammunition resupply. Return to the Sea Shadow to end your campaign. This vessel will only approach the coast when necessary, carrying fuel and ammunition ro uh, reloads. Home sweet home, Chief. The Shadow's stealthy, but if it stays in one spot too long, it's a sitting duck. We're keeping it mobile. 
check for it on your map. Yeah, they, I think there's only two of those actually made in real life. They were prototypes. And I think they ended up being too expensive and the stealth coating on them wasn't as good as it was hoped to be. Naja Hanna, freedom fighter. Naja leads a local resistance against Le Mans. Cool and calm under pressure, she provides strike with in-country intelligence, supplies and military support. Her code name is Naja Hanna, Commander. And like the King Cobra she's named for, she's bold, beautiful and lethal. She and her troops have been waging inconclusive skirmishes against Le Mans for months. Recently, Le Mans started rolling out weapons he shouldn't have been able to afford. And he's about to take the upper hand. Mm-hmm. However, she now has an Apache on her side. And we all know Apaches eat armor for breakfast. So, we also get the UHB-1 Huey Hog. This Vietnam-era gunship is slower than a Super Apache, but can carry twice as many personnel. It's armed with 48 rockets and 2,000 rounds of machine gun ammunition. Some Hueys are further equipped with a nose-mounted M5 anti-personnel grenade launcher. This one is... Remember, this thing doesn't have smart armor. In fact, if it were any dumber, it could be a pro wrestler. <laughs> but it's easy to fix with plain old rivets. You oh, hack. And you can bolt it back together. Mm -hmm. Ah, much better. Uh, and the hovercraft as well. This thing is kind of fun-ish. Should we? Yeah, we'll grab it. We'll show it off. But it's a bit weird. It's got tons of armor. Load 200 passengers, survivability, one attempt. Machine guns. Yeah, it's got machine guns, rockets, and 40 millimeter cannons. Patrol air cushion vehicle. <sighs> Patrol air cushion vehicle, that's really weird. Uh, a few of these experimental vessels saw actual service in Vietnam, powered by a Huey helicopter and a. Uh, energy? Huey helicopter? I can't speak. I've been drinking way too many energy drinks today. That I, I will lay that out now. Uh, packs were able to clear six foot waves, climb solid walls, and jump ditches whilst armed with formidable weaponry. They call this thing Y Vi. That means monster. Problem was, these armored crocodiles chomped the Pentagon's budget like they chewed up the enemy. Use it and have fun. Use it and have fun. We will. And then we have our Super Apache. This is the most advanced combination of technology and weaponry available. The Super Apache Smart Armor can repair limited damage and survive two crashes, unless you pick up uh, extra lives, of course. Strike Super Apache is the best hammer in our toolbox. First, learn the jink. It makes all the difference between being a live hero and a late. Second, hmm. check your wingtip configs. Standard load ain't for every roll. Mm-hmm. And we have LZs. These locations are drop-off points for rescued locals. The LZ near the Delta will be set up uh, by an LVTP amphibious vehicle and the inland LZ by a Black Hawk chopper. These drop-off landing zones will come in handy. You drop off the local, we repair your armor. Sounds like a fair trade to me. And ammo. To reload your regular weapons, winch up these containers. Customized wingtip weapons can only be resupplied from special ammo crates. The Apache cannot hold more than one load, full load of ammo, so any extra will be lost. Yeah, that's the problem uh, when it comes to the wingtips. Because like the f extra fuel pods would be great if we picked up a, a fuel pack and it refilled those, but it doesn't. The fact that you have to pick up specialist um, crates to reload your wingtips kind of... Renders it a bit pointless, really, if you ask me. Lamont takes killing seriously. Uses only the best ammo. This is what I call one-stop shop. Interesting that they show the Apache there with two rocket pods on each wing. Hmm, doesn't make sense. Strike has been pre-deploying fuel pods. Uh, fuel pods will appear on your SMFD, even if it's hidden inside structures. Your vehicle cannot hold more than one uh, full tank. Unless you have the, uh, the drop pods. The resistance has been helping us position fuel pods and hooches. Careful, you don't blow up the fuel when you break in. Yeah, that would be awkward. Easy to do as well. And we're almost there. Lamont and Naja have been waging a violent but uh, stalemated skirmish in Indocene. Lamont's troops suddenly acquired better weapons and the balance of power tips precariously to his side. 
The operative conditions are dramatic shift in balance of power, influx of new expensive arms, traffic of huge amounts of money, and most ominous, the theft of a tactical nuclear device. Common denominator, Lumont. Strike agent Nick Arnold was sent to assess the situation. We have lost signal. Find Nick and evaluate the scenario. Hey, yo, big general. Yeah, that's just our basic cutscene. Agent Nick Arnold is missing. Sea Shadow deploying the Super Apache to launch area. Supply drops in, uh, concluded at 0300 hours. Operation Delta Strike is green lighted. We've seeded the area with supplies and are setting up two LZs for backup. Recon the Delta, Commander. Find Nick. Assess the situation. Lamar has some smoke pits going. Can't break through the clutter. Help me out, Commander. Yeah, we're on it, Hack. We're on it. For the last several years, all of the major powers have turned a blind eye to the low-budget skirmish in Indocene. That's about to change. Lamar got that serious firepower from somewhere. Now he's kicking some serious butt. He controls a badass fortress on the Red River and runs his patrol boats down the Delta. Those rearmed troops and heavy tanks have captured and fortified several villages. Lamont is out to crush all resistance. If he succeeds, he might as well own Indocene. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not going to happen. Enemy overview. Lamont joined forces with the French Foreign Legion at 18 and was posted to Indocene. He was uh, cherished from the... Le I can actually read that. That's really blurry. From the Legion for Violence Against Civilians. He has become a mercenary, following money uh, to Algeria, Cuba, Congo, and Burma. His allegiance has been purchased by the major intelligence agencies, KGB, CIA, MI5, and the uh, surrogate. The CIA sent him to Indocene to organize local resistance. He had a different idea. Hmm. And everything I have is going mad. Not stupid, Commander. You're fighting on his turf. Make sure he doesn't set the terms. Plan your strikes carefully. You know what they say. If you only wound the devil, there's hell to pay. Mm-hmm. I've just realized as well, apparently we've been recording for 22 minutes already. I didn't realize the FMVs were quite that long. Um, you have to let me know. Uh, if you want to see them all in the future. Anyway, let's go raise hell. But before we go raise hell... No, 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 no. Let's go grab the... Um, the hovercraft. And then we can really kick some serious ass. Now, if I remember correctly... Oh, hello. Evening there, chief. To the fiery pit with you. I also used to think this was crazy cool. That lava in the middle there. I always wondered if there was something hidden within. Of course there isn't. Just down here we have our little monster friend. Which, you know, I'm not a huge fan of this thing. I don't like the way it controls. But, we showed off. We only have one life with it. We've got tons of armor. And we have so many weapons on this thing. It's insane. And we also can't jink. Which is kind of weird. Right, let's raise hell. So you can't really maneuver with this. But luckily we don't really have to. Literally this thing is just here to cause some serious dam- Oh god, damage. And we did actually just pick up some fuel there, I think. Never mind. Alright, let's ride. Where there's a sea of red, we're gonna make it dead. There we are. Paint- Oh, hello. There's a smoke pit. Oh, and you can see we kind of fall into the terrain in this thing as well, which I really don't like. Oh, hello. Look at all these vehicles here. Fresh meat for the grinder. I'm going to literally burn everything they have here. We're also destroying supplies, I think, which is never really a good idea, but it's the first level, so nobody cares. Now, you'll notice your guns do actually lock on two supplies, which is really frustrating. Shut up, asshole. Shut your noise, boy. Ooh, hello. What be you? I don't know. Will you be dead? Let's keep moving. Head towards the red. Ooh, a pibber. 
<laughs> totally adorbs, my friend. Totally adorbs. Oh, we're kind of going off track here a little bit, but that's okay. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. God damn. Hate this thing so much. Okay, that's cool. Ooh, more red. Yeah, really miss the ability to be able to jink. I mean, obviously the helicopter just has so much more maneuverability at its disposal. I mean, because, you know, of course it does. There's the duster. Waste the duster. Now, it does look like we're murdering our uh, innocent little village here, and we are. But there's a lot of supplies hidden in some of these buildings, so it's always worth it. Wow, we're tearing through our armor as well. This thing really does suffer um, from not being maneuverable enough. Yeah, come on. There we go. Ugh. Maybe they should have used something a little bit more powerful than the Huey engine. I don't think it's quite up to the task. Alrighty. And um, why are we stuck? We're stuck because it's the edge of the map. I see. That makes sense. Uh, last one. Oh, there's our chopper. Don't really want to go blow that up. Oh, evening. More tea, Vicar. Now, we can run through all of these vehicles and buildings, which is kind of nice. But it does hurt us, obviously. Um, Let's get comfortable here. There we go. Uh, right, so we need to go all the way up here. Whoa, evening. Sorry, build the Pentagon. What's up here? Apart from that, I really wish we could jink. It's so annoying, not uh, annoying. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. It's so annoying not being able to sidestep. We are chewing through our fuel as well, but that's fine. Ooh, look at all these red enemies. Excellent. You got me. <laughs> you got me. I fucking did, my friend. You're shredded. Let's waste the pibber. Ha! Huh, that doesn't look promising. So Nick has been taken out. At least his chopper has been taken out. Yeah, I hope he's okay. I'm sure we'll find out one way or another as the mission progresses. Ooh. Look at all this. <laughs> See those guys shoveling stuff into the fire. Come down and fight. What are you talking about, mate? I'm on the ground. I can't possibly be any lower. I'm just saying, alright? I've come down into this thing to make it fairer for you. At least that's my excuse. You know, these machine guns actually on this uh, thing I think are better than the Apaches, which is quite nice. Ugh, god damn bloody thing. So hard to get this thing up and around the terrain. I think that's why I don't like it, because the maneuverability on it is just non-existent. Check your, map. Check your map. Will do, buddy. Will do. Radar view cleared. That's good work, Chief. Check your map. You can now see what's under the soot. Excellent. Um, now, let's have a little look for some enemies. We pretty much cleared out the starting area. AMXs. Yeah, there's a few more pibbers left, but that's fine. Now we just got to rescue Nick. Now, I don't think we could do this without the helicopter. So... Let's go get the chopper back. Now, unfortunately, I think we have to self destruct to get our um, oh hello to get our chopper back which is a pain because that actually takes one of our lives I believe there's no easy way I mean this is quite a nice little throwback to jungle strike but the jungle strike hovercraft in my opinion was just so much better whoa don't destroy those Almost. We need those supplies, yo. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's try to mitigate friendly fire as much as possible. Collateral damage and all that. Um, there's a Stuart over there. We've basically taken out everything we can, really. Um, let's head towards... Let's head towards our next objective anyway. We'll light up anything we can, we find along the way. Because we might as well. Oh, hey, buddy. Ah, towers, huh? It's no problem. Oh, we just Rambo everything. Ooh, what's this big collection of red over here? Ah, hello. 
This is little, a cute little area. Let's raise it to the ground. Yeah. Well, we don't care about that. Let's disable the alert zone. That will actually help us out a little bit later. In fact, we can thin the herd as much as we possibly can. We don't mind doing things slightly out of out of order. Like I say, we might as well enjoy this thing whilst we've got it. We can just ram tanks full on as well, which is quite cool. Shut up, tower. Whoa, we're actually getting some lag there too. Which is kind of interesting. Now actually, destroying all this will help us out in a later mission. Only a little bit. But every little helps, am I right? Now, let's go this way. Let's go towards our objective. We're down to like a thousand armor, so. I mean, you can self destruct, but A, I can't remember how to do that, and B, there's no point wasting the armor. Ah, oh, hello. Ain't you a cutie? Well, you're dead now. Ooh. What's going on? Closing in on Nick. There he is. No movement detected. Approach mm. with caution. Bring him back to the sea shadow. Yeah, I this leave my boys behind. doesn't sound good. And I don't know why that skipped there. I, th I don't think we can hear that back. Nick Arnold has been shot down. He's likely to be in grave danger. Oops. Extract Nick as soon as you lock onto his homing signal. Return him to your Sea Shadow home base. We've lost voice contact with Nick, Commander. The situation is dire. When you do pick up his homing signal, head to the contact point and extract him. Exercise extreme caution. Indo scene is one giant sinkhole. Don't <laughs> yeah. We'll endeavor not to. Right. Now, this is going to be very difficult to do. In this thing. Ah, shut your noise, buddy. Die quietly, honestly. <laughs> I love this game. It's so ridiculous. I'm pretty sure if we come over here in our helicopter, these guys will just all spring out. Hey, Pippa. Hmm. Now, I can't remember how we self destruct because we. Although I said we wouldn't do it, we're almost at the point now where we can't progress with this thing. Watch targeting, Commander. Hmm. Yep, and we've screwed it up. <laughs> okay, so I have just run over Nick. God damn it. Okay, guys, I'm going to get us back to this bit. <laughs> but I'm not going to use this thing uh, because I really, really don't like it. So I'll catch you guys in a minute.